You guys know exactly what I'm doing, right? Boom. What's this? So today we're going to take a look at how we can split an object in After Effects and have and the inside of the object sort of uh, pulsating using uh, native effects in After Effects. And yeah, this is supposed to be an, a Halloween special, but you know, I we don't actually celebrate Halloween, so I'll just put on this wig that I had uh, two years ago. Uh, anyways, let's jump on to the video. <laughs> Right, so now we're in the composition. Let's create our base layer. I'm gonna type out something edgy, detached. How oh, that? Yeah, really edgy. Uh, drag it down a little. Set it up in the middle of the composition like so. Now my idea is having uh, the thing split from the middle. Uh, stretch uh, vertically. Uh, uh, I think we're gonna start out with creating the middle stretch part of the word. I think that's uh, the most straightforward part of the animation. No puns intended. Uh, so now we're gonna uh, pre-compose this uh, comp over here. I'm gonna call it uh, base comp. I'm gonna leave that over here. I'm gonna paint it yellow so that we can go back to it later uh, once we finish with the middle part. But that base comp, we're gonna pre-compose another time, uh, move all attributes obviously, and then I'm gonna name it base comp uh, stretch. And inside of this base comp stretch layer, pull up the uh, size property of the layer. Uh, uncheck this link and then drag it all the way up like so yeah that's pretty good i think uh stretch it all the way uh, as far as you can go like until the base layer became just these uh singular line it's like as if the single pixel the horizontal pixel of the object is being stretched out to the maximum and this is what we're gonna end up with and that's looking good enough Okay, right here, and then I'm gonna draw. Uh, so just stick with me, guys. It's gonna get pretty convoluted. It's gonna m make way more sense later on. I'm gonna create a new shape layer, and this shape is gonna act as the entire mask of the of the insides of the object. Um, double click on the rectangle tool. I'm gonna color it something else, maybe pink. Bright pink is good. And then I'm gonna call this one mask. Uh, stretch mask. And then I'm gonna mask the uh, uh, stretch layer to the stretch mask. Boom. And now once you jump into the property of the stretch mask and you know mess with the property a little bit, now we got the stretch part. Uh, it's looking like a uh, looking a bit like it's being compressed in. Uh, on either two sides of the vertical axis. This is where we're gonna pluck our top and bottom uh, pieces of the object. That's where the or original base comp uh, come in. I'm gonna drag this one over here, put it on top, and yeah, I'm gonna just hide this uh, stretch layer a little bit. Now, um, using our initial base comp, we're gonna create the top and bottom of the stretch uh, so right here, I'm gonna create a new mask, and I'm not gonna draw out, draw it out, and the exact. It, it, actually, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be too precise. I'm just gonna measure it with my eye and see where the middle point of the mask is gonna go. Pull up in the middle of the comb, drag it out, hold shift like this. There we go. It can go out uh, of the composition a little bit. Just make sure to cover the entirety of that layer. And yeah, I'm gonna drag this out. So now we get the top half of the comb. I'm gonna call this top half. Um, I'm gonna duplicate that, Control D, and I'm gonna dra drag this mask downwards to cover the rest of the object. So now I'm gonna call this the bottom half. Sweet, now we got the top, we got the bottom, and we got the stretch part. So now, you know, as you can see, this is what we're gonna have to uh, set up. 
so this is this is basically the scene that we're gonna have to set up and this is where the stretch mark comes in because now we're gonna jump into our one of my favorite script the create nulls from path and this is uh, gonna be essential to the whole operation so I'm gonna revert back to the original beginning a little bit hide the top and bottom part okay, we're gonna come back to them this time we're gonna deal with the uh, stress stretch mask okay, so we're gonna jump into the mask uh, drop down to the rectangle path of the shape right click and convert to Bezier path boom and now instead of a regular re regular rectangular a regular rectangle is going to be converted into these four individual points and we're going to turn these four points into you've guessed it nulls into <laughs> nulls i'm so tired and yeah uh, this time we're going to use point follows null and we're going to control these nulls we got the sweet nulls let's control the uh, shape and because it's controlling the shape, it's also controlling the mass of the stretch object as well. Right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify the control a little bit to one single null. So I'm gonna find out which one of these nulls are tops and bottom. Here we got the two tops over here. I'm gonna call them top left. Yeah, and top right be obviously the bottom one so bottom left and bottom right so you're gonna want to pull up the uh, position modules of each of these one and then uh, separate the dimensions for each of them there we go now our, our objective is to have them all centered or to have them end up in the center of the composition so for our specific composition it's going to be a one no 1080 divided by two that's going to be 450 like this one so put them all at 450 like so and now we're going to create two new nulls and we're gonna call this one bottom control. Create another, another one and call it top control. Now what we're gonna do is parent the uh, position, the uh, vertical position of each of the nodes that we just created uh, to uh, uh, to their respective uh, to their respective custom nodes. When you move them up and down, the mask is gonna uh, move accordingly to uh, the uh, nulls and now we can actually hide these nulls over here to get a cleaner timeline boom right so now we have these two nulls that's the, that controls the uh, mass going up and down I'm gonna return I'm gonna just gonna return them to the original position now we can uh, actually enable the two ends of the object and parent each one to their respective uh, nulls like uh, like we did with the original nulls of the mask so drop this one down here bottom half down here and then repeat the process again and then uh, separate the dimensions you know so that we get a much more precise control of what's going on uh, why y position of the bottom half to the y position of the bottom and y position of the y position of the top to the y position of the top null. There we go. Ooh. And now we got something that looks like this. Since we've already enlarged the, the object in here to such a huge extent, what we're gonna see is like the middle part, the sort of the middle row pixel getting uh, stretched out. And as you can see over here, we got some got a gap over here between the top and the uh, uh, pixel part uh, easy way to fix this is just drag the drag the mass down a little bit of the just drag it down a little bit until it covers that uh, or covers that gap just enough you don't want it too much yeah I think we're pretty much done with the uh, stretching uh, 
part of the whole operation. And uh, I've actually created a custom project file or a, a custom toolkit uh, two years, three years ago. And I've uploaded and made a few posts about it on my Instagram. So, you know, if you want to skip the whole thing and just get down to the nitty gritty uh, animation stuff, then you can go ahead and check out my Gumroad uh, in the link down below and uh, download the file. So now we're gonna go ahead and jump in and animate this uh, uh, whole thing. I'm gonna uh, pull up the top control, keyframe the Y position, then goes with the bottom control, keyframe the Y position, and go ahead over here to maybe one and a half second, uh, drag the bottom one down, drag the upper one, the top one up. Uh, maybe adjust the keyframes a little bit. Uh, maybe we jump in the graph and adjusting the uh, adjusting the graph a little bit, like so. Maybe dragging it a little bit more, make it uh, so that it's coming in more in a more sudden way. We want this to be like a almost like a horror feeling. Pull. That's good. Yeah, so the inside, I'm gonna color it uh, red. I usually would, would go with red because that's a color, uh, usually the default color, right? I want a beautiful red over here. Oh, like so, yeah. With a little bit of pinkish hue. Draw that out. Boom. Get the insides. So now, how do we get the inside of the object to have this sort of elastic animation that wiggles about uh, due to the force of it being stretched out? Right, we're gonna get started with creating a new shape layer and make sure this uh, shape layer is like an ellipse and let's make sure it's cover the entire range of the stretch. Maybe you can like decrease the size a little bit. You know, we most, most of the time we just want the stretching part to be limited to around here somewhere you know uh, since sort of, sort of mimicking uh, an elastic animation those is most stretchiest part is going to be in the middle right so now i'm going to put in a blur uh, in fact fast box works fine i think let's go uh, change it this to a white color and uh, make sure make sure it's bright it's good now i'm going to call this the uh choke man there we go uh hide this away for a little bit and then on the on the base comp stretch layer uh, which is this one over here I'm gonna put in a camera lens blur effect it's quite a heavy quite a heavy effect but it does a job layer choose the uh, choke matte layer that we just uh, uh made and uh, change the source to the effect and mask so that is also taking in the uh, blur of uh, the box blur effect that we just put in it and now for the final step we're gonna put in a simple choker boom and then drag it up and as you can see it's already do the trick right here gonna decrease the uh decrease the lens blur a little bit or you know you can uh, revert to a matte choker which we, you get more uh, control with all the uh, softness and all of the choking of the blur underneath the effect you know so obviously you can drag down the grade level softness over here down to maybe two not all the way down we need, you don't want to make it too jacky jackety or something really oh it's like scoops that's a terrible impression <laughs> Right, so uh, you know, play around with it. Uh, geometric softness. I uh, usually drag it down a little bit, maybe just about uh, three, uh, three or two. And, you know, you can go ahead and choke it up. And so the more you choke up, the more uh, the space and in the inside of the shape is going to be compressed according to where the blurring of the mat is. Right. So now you got a pre-stretch out look. We're going to go ahead and animate that. Uh, so right here, we don't you don't want it to be stretched yet. So choking is gonna be uh, kept to a minimal. Uh, probably about uh, make it thirty over here. Keyframe that, and once it reaches the uh, terminal position, to be stretched uh, to the uh, to the most ultimate, you know, like this over here. 
it's going to look like um, muscles or uh, intestines being stretched out and that's uh, giving it a really good look gonna drag down the uh, gonna drag down the softness a little bit more make sure it doesn't it doesn't go too far let it disappear geometric softness decrease a little bit more yeah that's that's good enough and uh, and yeah uh, once it goes up over here it's gonna it's gonna bounce a little bit like so so when you drag this choke to the amount below zero it's actually gonna do the opposite of a tr of a choke which is a an expansion you know still based on where the blurring is done uh, where the blurring is being done over here right all right so that we get a little bit of bounce uh sort of animation of the elasticity then we drag it down uh, drag it up over here a little bit more not as uh, so far as the as the initial choking that we did over here in the beginning mm -hmm. and then stretch it back again to the minus property you know and then one last time to the choking amount and then we're done we're gonna be we're gonna end up over here. Yeah, it looks like it's the inside of the object is being stretched. That's pretty cool. And then I'm gonna uh, easy ease all these keyframes. Kind of wanna, I kind of want these to happen a little bit quicker, uh, like so. And, and I'm gonna drag the graph, the speed graph of the initial ones a little bit quicker so that it happens quicker. It's pretty good. Uh, Make sure they get that elastics feeling like so. I like how, how it sort of it looks like it's uh, it's stopping it's stopping choked over here and then it's just bounced back with like a like a bit of vengeance right here. I'm gonna drag this forward a little bit. Or maybe yeah forward over here a little bit. Maybe this, uh, maybe the ending choking is still a little bit too far off. I'm gonna decrease the uh, size a little bit more to 65 or maybe 40. There we go. Looks like a more natural stretch. When you try to expand uh, the choker, i.e. you try to go to the opposite side of the choking process, you might run into some of the jaggedy edge over here on the, uh, on the stretch part. So the way to remedy that is gonna be to keyframe the geometric softness level over here. Put a keyframe on that and 2.6 is gonna be the amount where it's uh, being stretched to the furthest. So I'm gonna move that down here like so. This is where 2.6 is gonna be. Uh, over here when it's being expanded out, I'm gonna drag that down to zero. So you know we get a lesser amount of, that, uh, of those uh, raggedy edges. Over here, drag it back up to 2.6. Over here, drag it down to zero again. And make sure it returns back to 2.6, which is our, you know, uh, which is where we get our prettiest result. This could be something like a piano or a elastic or like a guitar animation. Right now, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a horror theme. Uh, animation because it's Halloween. You know, even though we don't celebrate it here, people just, people around just wouldn't stop talking about it. So yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a trend really. And the special thing about this whole setup over here is that you can actually jump into the base comp layer and you can actually just replace this uh, entire world with something else. Cool, me Mifa. <laughs> Like so, you know, and then drag it out. It's like a pretty cool toolkit. And yeah, there you guys go. Uh, stretching, splitting, and half animation just in time for Halloween. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did make something or follow this tutorial, uh, you know, make sure to post it on uh, Instagram or just send it to me, and I'd love to see some of that. Uh, thanks, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.